hello beautiful people welcome back to my youtube channel my name is bb babatunde ikotun i'm a faith and lifestyle content creator living in ontario canada if this is your first time stopping by welcome to you and if you're a returning subscriber shout out to you you're the best so by the topic of today you can see what we're going to be chatting about right you can see that i saw the movie the weight it's actually on netflix and um it's very star star studded with all your favorite actors and actresses and it was teamed as a fake mu um, fake movie um based on my research i did see that it was based on the book and i thought it was a very interesting movie there were a lot of things i loved about it i loved the cast i think they did a good job in idima okoje kunle remi um Delamo, um what's his name I'll, I'll put his name now i'm just forgetting his name insert a team like all these amazing people that we've come to know and love and there was even kit and show like the og kit and show was in the movie so it was an amazing movie that i i enjoyed um but i i have some things about it so i'll just start by saying the things i loved about the movies first the cast was good i think they got got a lot of solid people to star in this movie the production too was amazing i loved the set the costumes the makeup like everything about the production was given um what else did i like i think those are like the major things that i like i think the story was a bit slow for me and the reason why i actually watched this movie was not because i saw anyone on social media talk about it i went to the salon to get my hair done and um my sal the person that does my hair she's nigerian so anytime we go she um opens up netflix and uh, she was like what movie do you want to watch and i was like oh the wait everyone has been talking about it. play that so i started watching it and it was interesting they said it was a fake movie and i just had a couple of thoughts so if you haven't seen the movie i'm not gonna try to drop too much spoilers so that way if you do decide to watch the movie you can make the independent choice all right i'm based on my video you can make the independent choice to go and watch the movie or not so no spoilers i promise i'll try no spoilers whatsoever but the movie is based on waiting and i've actually done a video on what to do when you're waiting on god and i'll put the link somewhere I don't know where that would be maybe here or here but i'll put the link so you can go check it out just in case you're in that season um of waiting on god for something but the essence of the movie was a wait right um there were different categories but i'll say the primary part were women that were waiting um on god for a child and it was really nice they had this really nice support group where they come together di women from different walks of life they come together kind of like think about it like alcoholic anonymous like a meeting so they come and share like their struggles their pain their difficulties as they deal with um infertility um as women and we can see in the movie once a woman is successful and has a baby they wrap up the chair in like ankara fabric and still leave the chair in the way in the meeting room because i thought um it was it was pretty it was pretty cool i really liked um that piece of significance so i guess the women can always look at the chair and be like oh our friend that was here she finally had a baby if god can do it for her god will do it for me as well so i thought that was pretty neat and there was another category of like someone else that was waiting on god for a job he had graduated top of his class for he didn't just get opportunities like you know how the situation back home in nigeria can be how the the social economic situation is not going really well so you can see people that are super brilliant super ambitious and just great all around but for them to get a job is really hard except if they know somebody that knows somebody or a connection or something or just honestly favor so there was that part and i think this third part is not that clear so if you've watched the movie you can correct me so like incest character i believe she was waiting on god for a life partner and i may be wrong but that was kind of like the gist i got when she started um a relationship with one of the other guys and she was like she's waiting on a confirmation from god so i'll just take that as she was waiting on god for a life partner so i've said a lot without saying too much and without spoiling the movie so the, my thoughts about the movie um it just i guess i'll start from oh, where do i start from let me start from the fact that it was it was a fake movie but i didn't feel like it was a fake movie like i i'm the kind of person that if something is a fake based music or gospel based not music gospel or faith based movie like i i i want to learn about the faith like i don't think anybody would watch 
that movie and like be interested in Jesus Christ being their Lord and their personal Savior. Um, I'm not saying that was what the movie set out to achieve, but if someone brands their movie as a fake movie or a Christian movie, I have that expectation to be slapped in the face with their doctrines and their beliefs. And quite frankly, the movie missed the mark on that. So I'd have rather if they just said it was a movie and not really put like faith or Christian on it. Actually, I'm not really sure if they did this. Maybe this is people projecting on the movie. Maybe they didn't say it wasn't a faith. I don't know, actually. So I probably, but anyways, it, it didn't like Jesus Christ being someone's Lord and Savior and what he can do through them and like just seeing that relationship. Like it, it wasn't really, really highlighted. And I wish he could have done that a little bit. And I know that like this was a beautifully done movie. So this is not me criticizing and talking down on it because i know it's a lot of work to put something out there even me that i'm doing other youtube video i know how much work comes into creating this content let alone a movie that is on netflix so no this is not me bad mouthing or bashing but these are just some expectations and things i wished i could have seen since it was termed a faith-based or a christian movie another thing that was a bit missing was believers authority right one of the characters had this recurring bad nightmare and after they had the bad nightmare something bad will happen and i was like hmm it's a fake movie right as christians like when we go through situations where we have like nightmares or bad dreams or bad visions like there's a certain way we've been trained to respond to that and how do we respond to that we respond to that by standing firm in our authority so if i'm having a bad nightmare like i'm not gonna get scared i'm not gonna get worried i'm not gonna get confused i mean i may like in the, in the like at the point of it happening but we as christians must be trained to respond to things that are not, not in alignment to who we are in Christ. And what does that mean? If you have a nightmare and you wake up and you're scared and you're screaming like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Your response is not just, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, and just let it go. No, you begin to speak the things that God has spoken concerning you. You begin to declare that God has given me power and authority against the devils and against demons against principalities and powers right i wish there was a practicality to showing what should happen when a believer has a nightmare we don't just wake up and be like oh my god i had a nightmare again la, la, la. no 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 no. Start, i'm not even saying you should just go and start blasting in tongues you can do that i would do that but there's just that bringing yourself and bringing your mind back to decreeing and declaring who you are in Christ, right? The Bible tells us that we are victorious and more than conquerors in Christ. So there is nothing that would try to make it seem like we are under pressure or we are not victorious or we are struggling for victory. No, that's not what the Bible says, right? The Bible tells us that he made an open spectacle of the devil, right? That means Jesus Christ made an open spectacle of principalities and powers and won over them and gave us the victory so if anything doesn't align with what the bible says concerning our identity concerning our reality in christ we know that it's an abnormality and we do not just permit it no 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 no. we speak words we speak in tongues we pray we declare like we know what to do so it, 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 it just the fact that they say it was a faith-based music and i mean we've also seen these people praying at some point it was it just <laughs> It made me desiring more. Like I wanted a Christian, a baby Christian, or even someone that was curious about Christianity, watching that movie, knowing exactly what to do after they have such dreams, right? Because we know that um, dreams like that, many times it, the devil just sees it as a scare tactic because he knows once you buy into fear, once you buy into confusion, once you buy into that, it's very easy for him to like make you stagnant. But God has given us his word. So therefore, we know what to do when the devil brings this tactic into our space. We reject, we refuse, and we speak those things that God has said concerning us. So that's one of the things, one of the areas that I thought that um, I, I wanted to see more, but I didn't see more. I think the other thing was... There's, and, and this is me. I'm going to talk about us as the body of Christ and like areas we need to do better. Like I feel like when a woman is struggling with fertility, um, it's very easy for us to go with that mindset of looking at her as though she's less of what God has called her already. As believers, we know that there is nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing spoiled in us. So whether you're single or you're married, it doesn't change your position as a believer. Whether you're child-free or have a child, it doesn't change that. And I know many times. 
even in our prayer points in churches it makes it seem as if those that are unable to have children are not saved enough or are not believers enough or are, like i don't know if you guys get what i'm saying let me know if you get what i'm saying but like the movie kind of painted like this kind of deficiency that suddenly because you don't have a child that means you're not worthy enough in society right you can't contribute to society you can't contribute to your local church and sometimes we even emphasize this in our prayers as local church right we say things like i will never be barren amen we would never be barren i wouldn't you wouldn't in jesus name but if someone does have like fertility issues and they're waiting on god to like do a miracle with their reproductive system or their husband's reproductive system while they wait it should never they should never be looked at, at or looked upon as someone that is deficient in every in any shape manner form like there will even be people that would not want children on purpose and we should not also look at them as they're not fulfilling god's mandate or they're not christian enough because they don't want to have children or because they can't have children but there's always this air of like uh anyone that doesn't have children and is married they're kind of like inferior you get the gist there's just this underlining like no one really talks about it kind of vibe when it comes to this and i really wanted to just see that arising from um in christ identity and i really like that that character in edema okoji's character talked about when they were like oh i'm gonna spoil it but he said something along the lines of like we too were adopted in christ so he's seeing that things like adoption things like surrogacy those things don't make us sinful they don't make us ungodly they don't make us like unworthy of like god's love you do what you have to do if you want to go for an ivf you go for it if you want to go for surrogacy you go for it if you want to go for adoption you go for it it doesn't necessarily like cancel out your ability to trust and wait on god if that makes any sense but let, yeah let me know like it doesn't cancel out your ability to wait on god because you're doing all those things but the only difference is that necessarily don't go into those things with desperation right it's advice that yeah that you pray about it and you receive the peace of god in your heart concerning it in forge ahead babies are not necessarily formed in the womb they are formed in the heart there are some people that it does they give birth to a child biologically and they don't really care about the child while some people are adopted and that child is like means a lot to them so this is just to show that baby are really formed in our hearts right as soon as you have a space in your heart for this baby like that's all that matters boo. that's all that matters so i really just wanted to stretch stress that a bit like these things are not necessarily bad the thing that i wish they could have stressed a bit on is where is god in our pain or where is god in our struggles as believers it's very easy for us to believe that god is not with us when we go through difficult situations and that's contrary to what scripture says right we see in isaiah it says when you pass through waters i'll be with you it will not swallow you right you see god's reassurance over and over again oh neither neither life nor death nor demons nor principalities nor powers nor perils nor evils can separate me from the love of god we see in so many places in the bible where it was stressed about where god is in our pain so we must stay very grounded in god's presence even when we go through trials so we don't end up getting angry with god because i know that's something that believers end up experiencing like oh i applied for a visa they rejected me then i'm and i'm angry with god i'm not gonna pray i'm not gonna go to church i'm not gonna have hope i'm not gonna trust like these are things that we like experience as um as children of god like quite frankly like it's very easy for us to just feel like oh god is not with me or god has not answered me or god has failed me and i'm just going to ignore god but no it's for us to remain grounded in that our understanding of our oneness with god like god has put a spirit in us how much like how much closer can god be within the situation so even if you're going through hard times hardships know that god is in you therefore he's with you he's holding your hand he's cheering you on 
on is making you know that all things you know many times when we say the scripture all things work together for good we like to think of all things as good things it's also that bad things right bad situations work together for good that god causes it for good god is not the one causing the bad situation but the fact that that bad situation is where we are in we still cause it to work together for our good to the praise of his glory that we have a glorious testimony and i would really really recommend that you really watch that my video what to do when you're waiting on god because it really really help and just recalibrate um your mindset uh, as you wait so it's just like god is there even in our pain right god is never apart from the believer god is never away from the believer and this is a truth that we must know we must believe we must stay pained on it's very important because it's like i don't i that's what i, I wish they, they let us know that god is always with us even when we don't feel it right because you know our feelings feelings are fickle like don't even trust your feelings when it comes to spiritual things trust the word of god the word of god is tested and trusted above all so yeah just know that god is with you and i wish they stressed that more like it being a fake movie i, I wish they stressed that a, a, just a little bit more and just remind people that it doesn't matter what the situation is it doesn't matter if you're angry with god god is still with you and i think the other thing is that there was a lot of like begging god and pleading god and like trying to you know we have this belief of like trying to massage god's ego to get him to do something for us and if you watch my last video about um fasting you can see what i talked about is that god's like our prayer our fasting all that we do is for us and not for god so when we pray concerning certain situations it's not necessarily to move god's hand but it's to move us to align with god's will so there are certain things that we would pray about as believers and god god would just be waiting for you to like come to the realization of either i've done it already or this is not my plan for you or whatever it may be right so it's really about us not about moving god or trying to cajole god or impress god or do you get like you just get that kind of vibe and i was like ah biblically speaking this is not necessarily true so i didn't want this video to be too long if you've seen the movie let me know what you think because i tweeted about this and i think i tweeted i could have been a really great christian movie could have been a great amazing movie but it, it fell flat but other than that this is not a criticism of this movie i think the production everything was beautiful everything i'm just sharing is how it could have for that become a very well established with your chest christian movie and not just on the surface if you get what i'm saying but if you've watched this video up until this point please i want you to leave a comment below tell me have you seen the movie do you plan on seeing it what are your thoughts about the things i've shared and also please like and share it's good to share on your twitter if you just press that share button you can share to twitter facebook you can share to your instagram stories you can share to your whatsapp status just share this video so more people can see it last but not the least if you're yet to subscribe I'm begging you with the love of God, smash that subscribe button right now. Like, smash it. Smash, smash, smash it. Alright, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. And don't forget, God is not angry with you. Bye.